Hello and good evening, everyone. It's Karina Gage here, and I am so excited this evening. I have an amazing and beautiful uh, Jordan here, Jordan Lynn. She is a, I was just telling her before we started, I love her title. She is a pro productivity and self-care expert, guys. I love this. Uh, Jordan Lynn, she helps women protect their time, their energy, and their greatest assets by teaching them how to implement self-care and productivity into their lives. I absolutely love this. Thank you so much, Jordan, for taking time out of your day to be here today. And I tell me a little bit more about you, your background. And then I also want to know, I want to learn, what are two things that you absolutely love doing outside of work, which I kind of already have an idea. <laughs> well, hello. So my name is Jordan Lynn and a little bit about me. So I started as a fitness coach. I came into the industry and I wanted to coach women just, you know, on our our bodies, on becoming more fit. That's that, you know, that I feel that's, you know, kind of where we all start. That's where we think our confidence is, that's where we think our self-love is, if we change these things about our body image, you know, everything kind of falls into place. Um, but it really didn't align with where I I didn't didn't align with my values. It didn't align with with what I wanted. And I think that the diet industry really feeds us a dream, you know, and I don't like to feed that dream. I don't like feeling like feeding these, these cyclic measures. I don't like the fact that, oh, get swim in 90 seconds or whatever, you know, like what, what, whatever, whatever it is, it just didn't align because I would want women to just live a healthy lifestyle. And being in a diet cycle is not one of those things. So it took me um, a long time to figure things out. You know, I knew I wanted to be in self-care. I knew I wanted to help women love their bodies, love themselves, be confident, be confident in their businesses. And I was hustling. I was hustling to find what I wanted to do, hustling to, you know, really find that title that, that aligned with my values. And I ended up working 100 hours a week, sleeping wow. for sleeping four hours a night and wow. it wasn't good burnt out couldn't do it any longer and you I lost the vision of why I wanted to be an entrepreneur I lost I lost myself uh we all want to step into this space because of freedom one way or another whether right. it's financial freedom whether it's the ditch the nine to five freedom whether it's you hate your boss whatever there is some sort of freedom attached to it and for me it was like Man, like I just didn't leave my hundred hour a week corporate job to work a hundred hours a week. Like that's right. really not why I wanted to right. be here. Right. So then I, ha I had to bring it all together. And like we were talking about before, people think that taking care of yourself and self care is unproductive, but it probably is right. the most productive thing that you can do. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that. So true. So that's when I wanted to become this self-care and productivity coach because we need to be at like minimum baseline health to be productive in our business, to excel. And we right. all talk about this growth, the more growth that we do, the more you got to take care of yourself, the more that you have to protect your assets, right? And the more productive and organized you're going to have to be to level up into this entrepreneurship dream. Right. So that's kind of... My background, where I came from, been through the burnout, don't want to go back there, totally refuse. <laughs> <laughs> and then two things in my spare time. So I am a competitive bodybuilder. Um, it's something that I hold near and dear to my heart. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, it's, it has taught me more about discipline and mindset than a lot in organization and planning and prepping than a lot of things um but like i said during this time i you know as a bodybuilder i have a good relationship with food i have a good relationship with movement and fitness um, which allows me to be competitive and still teach self-care in my space um and then the second thing, I, I just moved to edmonton with my husband and we just got a dog so the dog would be my second. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, congratulations on the move. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. I always like to hear how people get started when they finally feel in line, truly in line with their purpose. So I know that you said you went through the burnout. Was there anything else that was like, okay, this, this has got to end. 
I am ready to do something different. Where, where did that enlightenment come when you were like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. I want to coach women. I want to be a productivity and self-care expert, you know? <laughs> Well, there was a couple like eureka or aha moments for me. I was in the restaurant industry for a long time. I started bartending when I was 20. And from there, I, you know, just kind of moved up from restaurant manager to assistant general manager, general manager, things like that. And hours are completely out of whack. They're, you're working nights, you are working weekends, you are working holidays. So you're missing out on a lot of family time. You're missing out on a lot of relationships. You're pretty much like your social circle is also all bartenders and servers or restaurant managers. Yeah. Because it's hard to build and nurture and foster those relationships with people out of the industry because of your work schedule. Yeah. I was missing time with my family, as I said. Um, and then I think like I think I worked, it was light out when I got to work on Canada Day one day a couple years ago, and I left the next day when it was light out. So I have worked a lot. I want to say like 14 to 16 hours on yeah. Canada Day. Um, and for me, I was like, is this what I was meant to do? Was I put here to work 16 hours for this restaurant? And right. for a restaurant, or did I want to be a GM? You know, like my GM was doing the same thing. Like, is that what I aspire yeah. to be? And I was like, no. Like, yeah. no, like, no, like I don't want to work on these holidays. I don't want to work every Halloween, St. Patrick's Day, New Year's Eve. Like, I was like, oh, I gotta like, oh, I gotta step back here. No. And it was a big transition for me, and there was a lot of a lot of mental pullback and a lot of like uncomfortability because it was like, okay, but you know, you got to go back to serving then. And then it was looked upon, you know, from friends and family that I was like almost demoting my own self. And how come you just can't be, you know, you have a good job. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> like you have, you have vacation and you have, you yeah. mean like all these things like, that, were, yeah, yeah. that were taught. Right? Like, oh, 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 but they match your RSPs. Like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But, yeah. um, and that was a big thing for me. And so then I went back to serving and I started fitness coaching. And then with fitness coaching, a big thing was as a competitor, we have these photos. And for me, it was you have to let people know that being a bodybuilder on stage, those photos are unrealistic. My body doesn't look like that all the time. Um, it probably looks like that for literally eight hours and that's about it. And then wow. after my show, I go out and I eat hamburgers and chicken nuggets and then it, yeah. it's back to normal. Um, for me, it was a client of mine when I was a fitness coach. She was so afraid to even go into the gym. She just sat in the park because her mindset was so crippled by the fear of just going in and, and working out. I was like, there needs to be something something different here. And then also another big one was when my clients getting the results they wanted, still not happy. Still, because it's not all about body image. It's not all about like abs aren't going to make you happy. Like they're just so not. What, what was missing? What was the missing? The component? missing piece is that I felt that women would go to such extreme lengths to get some sort of body image. And that included ignoring their health. And that mm -hmm. wasn't okay with me. Yeah. And as women, like you said, like, we're, we're nurturers. We want to give all the stuff to everybody else and not ourselves. Yeah. And really putting ourselves first and giving ourselves that self-love, giving ourselves that confidence and working on that self-esteem muscle. That for yeah. me is what I wanted. I wanted to build powerful women that right. felt good going into the gym, that felt good when they went clothing shopping. And then it just transferred over to entrepreneurs that were not putting, again, women not putting themselves first. Gotcha. Yeah. So what do you, do you, what is your thoughts on um, structure, structure, whether it's in self-care, uh, you're, you're an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur. Sometimes we feel like, Oh, I'm going to work less. But when you first start, it's like, you're actually working a little bit more. You kind of have to find that balance. Um, is structure a very important um, 
component here when you're when you're an entrepreneur or either you're even if you're working long hours like you were before and self-care what is the what would you say how does that affect your health or your productivity um due to lack of structure so i love structure love routine all about it and what i like to tell people my thoughts on it is that it's different for everybody not everybody is supposed to wake up at 4 30 in the morning right that's you know what i mean but we go online and we, yeah. we, we look what's productive wake up early and yeah. work out like the rock like what like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some, some people are not productive in that out like we tend we don't have we have a productivity cup and yeah. If you are using so much mental effort to pull from this productivity cap because somebody online told you to, or you listen to a podcast or all the content that you're consuming is telling, you know, you have shiny object syndrome, like your structure is your structure. So what works for you is going to look different. I, you know, like my clients come to me and I'm like, all right, you, you got to set an alarm for five 30 and then you got to meditate and then you got to do this and then you got to do this. And like, no. Because that'll just pull like the couple we spilt over, it's gone, and then and then we have yeah. activity. Um, in the beginning, when you start planning, I think planning is very important. I plan my months, my weeks, and my days. Um, when you're just beginning, starting to look after yourself, you have to structure in your self care because you make that a non negotiable. You make that your doctor's appointment. Like, right. I'm going to work for this sixty minutes uninterrupted. I'm going to take a twenty minute break. And I'm going to go for a walk. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to listen to some music. I'm going to listen, read that book that I wanted to read or just take yeah. that time away. But you need, you need to plan it in. Right. I agree because a lot of times I love how you said, you know, treat it as a doctor's appointment because sometimes we will put it on our calendar and I am, I'm, I'll say I'm guilty of doing it. And then my timer will go off and I'm like, oh, I'll work another 30 minutes. Oh, another, another 30 minutes. But it's really show up for yourself in that moment. Show just like you would show up for to a doctor's appointment. You got to show up for yourself as well. So I love how you put it that way. Um, what are your tips? Or, or let me ask you: How did you reach your level or your self care success? The level of productivity and self care where you, the success that, where you are at now that now you have that ability to really guide other people you you you're you're walking in your calling because oh we have to as a coach as coaches we have to go through those go through go through the uh self-discovery and all that ourselves before we can actually you know guide others so how did you get to that point where you're like you know what i i believe that i have really i'm successful at this i really i'm i'm great at it I'm, i've achieved the level of success and maybe not the level of success that you want because every day is a new day to learn more right but when how did you get to that point where you're like okay i'm really good at this for for me for self-care like fitness has always been a thing um like nutrition things like that i always had a, i always had a pretty good grasp on but i always knew and when i say fitness it's fitness for me it's movement for everybody else so in that sort of aspect like it's finding what works for you. And I had to fall on my face a whole bunch. Like I had to realize that I wasn't that 430 woman. I'm like a, like a good yeah. seven o'clocker, like, you know, and, and, and that's okay. And I had to realize that I had so much, like when we talk about to-do lists, like full of fluff. As entrepreneurs, like full of fluff when it comes to marketing, when it comes to like anything is yeah. full of fluff, right? And it was really aligning myself of what were my goals, what was my vision, and what are my daily tasks that are going to get me there. That's Not, good. And that that and that's it's it's a one singular focusing task. Like when you know I, I review your months and, and you do all these things, but it's it's this is this is my goal. This is what I want. I'm so clear on it. It's like when we talk about when we niche out, when we do these things, like, I'm so clear on my goal. Okay, so now we just make those tasks, the essential tasks to get you there. We don't need all this stuff and all this show and all these, these thrills of to-do lists. We're addicted to to-do lists, right? Yeah, I agree. Am I doing something in the moment that's going to get me to my goal? 
That's and good. How, That's and how is it going to get me there? Yeah. Another thing is, is that to be honest, people are usually only productive four hours a day. Like that's it. That's all you got. It's yeah. around like three hours and 52 minutes. I don't know, but yeah. it's, it's four hours a day is like optimal productivity. And it's not all stuffed together. Mm. It's not like we have highs and lows throughout mm -hmm. our day of productivity. So at 9am, I'm looking real good. Come around noon, probably not so much. And then two again, good. And then for the rest of the night, you know, we, we do some other stuff like like learning or, or whatever you want to do. Um, but it's finding out what, where are you productive as a person, as an individual? That's what for me, what I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure this out because this, this isn't working yeah. for me. Yeah. So, so would you say like schedule your most important tasks during those times when you are productive? So in that case, you really have to really pay attention to yourself, right? Okay, like where am I, like I'm a morning person and I'm, and you say this because the way you said, you know, some people are not morning, like my husband and I are completely different. Like he's a, a night owl, I'm a morning person. And so I know that I'm, I'm more productive early in the morning. And then like you said, around noon, it's like, okay, I need to take a little break now. And then I'll take a little break, meditation, um, my lunch or whatever. And then I'll be able to, okay, for another two or three hours, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I see that. So, so I do, I've learned to, to, to schedule like, okay, this is when I'm most productive. This is when I need to get stuff done. Is that something that you recommend? Like really figure out what your productive times are and schedule. Yeah. Like really listen to yourself. Like if you're planning out, like, you know, you have your planner or your Google calendar, whatever it is. But I like to say like at the beginning, if you're not really sure, like when your most productive hours are, or, you know, kind of what's going on in your day, schedule it your day the way that you would regularly schedule it out. But then after each task, like just kind of do a self rating. And I just used to write it in my planner. Like, how was my energy during that task? How was my focus yes. during that task? And how yes. was like, was I motivated? Or was I kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, like where was I? And I kind of just do a self rating and you will start to see a pattern. That's like, you will start to be like, oh, like obviously like after lunch, like I've rested, I've done this. I've, you know, I've gone for a walk. I've relaxed, I've done whatever. Oh, so then, you know, 2 p.m., I'm focused. I have no problem putting my phone down. Uh, my time management is completely on point, and I'm energized to finish the tasks at hand. That's awesome. And then you just take advantage of, of that, of that a little bit of data. Like like I said, I just put it right in my planner. Like, oh, like, so, like, my focus was maybe a five or a four, yeah. whatever it is. And then, and then like, literally, you'll be like, oh, through, like, after, like, a week or two weeks even, you'll be like, oh, okay. So now I can optimize these points of my day. That's good. I love that advice. That's great because a lot of times people don't really don't even realize that they don't even know where to start. Like, how do I know when I'm most productive? That's a, keep a journal. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> All right. So um, I know that you have a program that's called Revive Your Health and Thrive in Business. Can you tell me a little bit about that, Jordan? Yeah. So Revive and Thrive is like such a great program. Um, I know we all say that. We're like, oh, my program's fantastic. <laughs> so what Reviving Thrive is, is that it revives your health and it helps you thrive within your business. So reviving your health is like I talked like we have these, we have to protect our self-care. And a lot of people are like, oh, self-care, I'm eating nutritiously, I'm moving every day, boxes are checked. Okay, so that's your physical self-care. So how's your mental self-care and your emotional self-care? I start with those pillars and then we move on to spiritual and social. All of those things are, are the basis that we need in life because I definitely promote happiness um, first and then I feel like everything comes along after we are happy as a whole individual. Yeah. And then with your business, we create productivity and organization within your schedule so you can grasp that entrepreneurial freedom that you wanted when you got into this. That's what Revive and Thrive is. It is a one-on-one -on -one program with me and it just makes it, I want to encompass that, that entrepreneur, like I said, the entrepreneur dream. So we revive your health and we make sure that you're thriving in your business because I feel we are to, always told to invest in ourselves, invest in yourself. Absolutely. And I'm totally with it. But if we keep investing in the same coaches, those coaches are just going to be putting more things on our plate. And our to-do list is going to pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up. Um, 
And we need to know how to organize that stuff. We need to know how to be productive. We can't right. level up and we can't grow in our business if we have no time. True. So, so true. <laughs> I'm like, I always say that I'm kind of like that middleman in between like business coaches. You know what I mean? Like your business, you just finished with a business coach. You're a little overwhelmed or you want to level up, but you kind of need to reschedule some stuff. I so love that. In, make sure that you're taken care of. Put your business, like I said, into like four to six hours a day. I like to stay around four hours a day. Yeah. Um, and then you'll have more time and then you can use the systems that we put in place together, these productivity, you find out about your productivity as, a, as an individual, as a client, and then you go on and you can level up in your business. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Just just really helping them get, uh, let them know what's not serving them, serving them well mm -hmm. in their ability to level up in their health and in their business, right? That's awesome. Um, and before we close uh, or we end the interview, I want to ask one more thing. What is your expert advice to those women and even men out there who keep putting themselves on the back burner? We mentioned it earlier. Don't realize that they're actually withholding self-love when they say, oh, I don't have time today. Or, no, I'd rather be doing this than that. It's a waste of time. What is your advice to them? A lot of that is mindset shifting and a lot of that is like inner work and kind of deep digging deep and thinking that like how come how come you feel that you're not important enough yeah how come how come you feel like you're the ceo of this business and how come you feel that this ceo that you want this business to be so successful like stop looking at you as you as a human but start looking at you and thinking like Hey, I'm the CEO and I want to run this business. How would an effective CEO run this business? They would take care of themselves. They, you know what I mean? Like we we think of the huge people. I think of, you know, like Tony Robbins, who, who was a hustler. Don't get me wrong. But he does not ignore himself. These, yeah. these high achieving women do not ignore themselves because they know that to take care of their business, they want to be on point. Yeah. I know, like if I want to take care of my business, I, I better be going and I better be feeling good. Uh, you know what I mean? I better be nourished. I better be rested because then I know I'm going to like walk in my office and I'm going to crush everything I need to crush with time, with yeah. energy and with focus. And at just at the beginning, like you are the priority because you're running the business. You're, you're the bones. Yeah. You, you're the foundation. So that's what, that you're important. So yeah. In the beginning, I feel like if you think that right now you and your self-love and your self-care is unworthy, what about the CEO of your business? Is that person unworthy? I don't think so, right? Yeah, that's great advice. Great advice because yeah, we we once we get so busy, especially women, we 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 are we just do that. We put ourselves in the back burner, and it's like okay, well, I'll do. I'll let. They kind of feel like well, I'm taking care of other people, so I'm going to be okay, but. It doesn't work that way. You got to take care of yourself so you can take better care of other people and your business as well. You know, like, your, your energy. You can't, like, we all talk, We I love the cups. We can't give our clients from an empty cup. You're not there for your clients if you're empty. I love that you think that, that we are, but we're really not. When our cup is full, we can give more. We can do more for our clients, for our partners, for our children, for our business, yeah. right? Like when you're taken care of, then you have the opportunity to be more of a giver. I agree 100%. I love that advice. Very great advice. And um, Jordan Lynn, can you please let the viewers know how they can connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So I am at the Miss of Mindset on Instagram. So it is MS and then of Mindset. And I'm jordanlynn.ca. So come check me out, whatever you want, whatever that. And then I'm, and then yeah, so Facebook is all the same. So I'm, I'm Instagram, this is a mindset, and then jordanlynn.ca. Um, anytime, connect with me anytime. I'm such a DM girl, connection, voice note, that's me. Um, I'd love to chat. That's and I just want to thank you again here, just in front of everyone for like really taking the time to answer. Um, when I inboxed you and asked you, hey, can I interview? I love what you're sharing, guys. You gotta, you need to follow her. She's it's very inspiring, energetic. Her energy that you see here, I mean, you 
in her photos on Instagram is just like, wow, this, this woman, I've got to know a little bit more about her. I want her on my show. So thank you so much, uh, guys. Definitely check out for her Instagram and her, um, her visit her, uh, connect with her on her webpage. And um, Jordan Lynn, just once again, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time. This is awesome. Time. This is great. I love doing this. Like, <laughs> And I want to thank everyone. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Love you all. And I'll see you next time.